All right, so um, the goal of this class is search engine optimization, learning how to get your online presence ranked higher on Google, on Bing, Yahoo, etc. Uh, let's do our, our first activity here. Uh, go ahead and open up your web browser. We've got all the popular ones down here, so open any web browser you'd like. And we'll go to the website google.com. Now, in addition to what I'm going to be saying, I'm also going to be writing notes. I'm going to be writing notes in my own little notepad file here, and I will put these notes into the network folder at the end of the day. So if you want a copy of my notes, I'll remind us where the network folder is later. But I'm writing some notes, and you can do so also on paper. Or if you want to do it digitally, you can go to the Start menu and search for Notepad and write notes, or Word, Microsoft Word, or not, because again, I'm going to give you these notes at the end of the day. So the first thing we're going to do is do a little activity with Google. So uh, search engine. Big one is Google. And earlier we said Bing. Google has approximately, I haven't looked up the latest number, but it's about 62% market share. That means about 62% of people in the world, when they search online, use Google. Now it was higher at a certain point. 70%, 75 or so, 80 or something a few years ago. But now it's 62%. It's gone down. Bing has about 20% market share. At one point, Bing had 0% market share. 5%, 10%, 15%. It's about 20 or 21%, whatever it is at the moment. Bing is ascending, increasing. Google is decreasing. I'm not saying that Bing is going to take over. I don't think anyone's going to take over Google's share of the pie. It's just so big and entrenched. But Google had a huge piece of the pie decreasing. And it's happened before. Remember Yahoo? Yahoo at one point used to have 90% market share. Back in the old days, 10, 15, 20 years ago, it had 90% or higher market share. Everyone was using Yahoo. Actually, it's spelled Yahoo. And so it had a huge market share. Then this new kid on the block, Google, came out in 1998, I think, 99. And its algorithm seemed to work better. Each search engine has an algorithm, a technique to display results. Because the purpose of the search engine, of course, is that I search websites. I search online. And there has to be some sort of technique, some sort of program, some algorithm that lets that happen. Yahoo's algorithm was one of the first ones. It worked really well. You type something into it, you found a website. Google's came out later, and theirs seemed to work a little better. So people started to use Google more. And then that reached a dominant stage at some point, maybe five, seven years ago, where it I forget the exact number, but it might have reached about 80% market share, and Yahoo decreased. Bing um, then appeared as well later, and it wanted to do search as well, and it's been climbing the charts. I'll explain why a little later. But each search engine has an algorithm that thinks it will give you the best results. Let's check that out right now. We're on google.com. We've got the search box, pretty familiar. Uh, in the search box, let's search for your name, search for your name as you are known, as you are well known or as you want to be known or commonly known. So if your full name is uh, William Jefferson Clinton, you want to search for Bill Clinton. So I'm not going to search for Victor Manuel Campos Jr. I'm just going to search for Victor Campos. That's how I'm most commonly known. So search for yourself. You might have heard it as Googling yourself. But again, you're just searching your, for yourself. I get 28 million results in half a second. The number one result 
is Victor Campos at the IMDB, the Internet Movie Database. That's not me. I was not born in 1935. That's not me. In my case, then a few images appear. Hey, there's me right there. Then the second result is my LinkedIn. The second result of all the Victor Campuses in the world, me. Third result, that's also one of my websites. Fourth result, that's also one of my online presences, right, my professors. Facebook, that's not me. I barely use my Facebook. That's not me. And we've got Victor Campos Leal, Victor Campos Leal Tenor, Facebook, that's not me, again. VictorCamposLeal.com, video about Victor Campos, seems to be in Portuguese, that's not me. And then Victor Campos on uh, Brand Yourself, that one is me. So about five results out of the ten are me. Make a note of the website brandyourself.com. This is known as a reputation management website or service. Reputation manage and service. Brandyourself.com. There's a bunch of other ones too. There is um, about.me. There's also um, one simply called reputation.com. The purpose of these websites is to manage your, your reputation online. For some of you this will be valuable, for some of you it won't. The purpose of the site, for depending on the site, for free or not, you can use these sites to put the best foot forward, your best foot forward, on the search engines. Use these sites to promote or to raise awareness of the best, of your best online profiles. I'm online personally. I use a lot of online services. Perhaps some embarrassing thing is up there. But something like Brand Yourself and About Me and Reputation are there for you to sort of like guide people and promote the best things about you. And again, depending on, uh, on yourself and various factors, this, or may not, this may or may not matter. For me, for example, I, I'm an instructor, I'm a web designer, my company, PMD Interactive, my face is on it a lot. Uh, so people might be searching for me. They want to know about what, what I'm up to online and such. And so I want to show the best things right away. Maybe on page 12 is the, it is the embarrassing stuff that people want to go that far. But on the first page or two, it's the best things. Let's say I'm an employee of a bigger company. Let's say I'm employed over at Qualcomm. I'm not really the face of the company. It really doesn't matter my online reputation that much. It's a big company. So perhaps in that case, it doesn't matter that I do any reputation management. But if I'm, if my name is on the is on the business card of the company, it might be important that I'm also sort of cleaning up my online life, because these search engines, Google, Bing, Yahoo, etc., are running 24 hours a day, scouring the internet to find everything, not maliciously, but just to catalog all the information of the world, and therefore that in that. Uh, um, embarrassing information of yours might come up and it might not be the best for you. So on your own, at some point, perhaps look into brand yourself. They've got a free version, they've got a paid version. Guess what? The paid version is better, but the free version still works really well. Yes? So let's say I'm the owner of a hotel mm -hmm. and I got bad reviews. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm tipping my hotel or something. Are you saying those sites can move? Yelp and TripAdvisor, like page three? In that case, not exactly. Yelp and TripAdvisor and Angie's List and such are such big presences now that we have to deal with, and we will talk about it, those review sites. So Brand Yourself and such is not <coughs> going to help with that. It's more like going to help with the, the, the trivial aspects, the embarrassing things online, the meaningless things online. We have to address the Yelp reviews and all of that 
which we'll talk about later, so this doesn't really focus on that. So doing a search for myself gives me all these results. It seems to be favoring and promoting the actor more than me, because the actor has existed in all of these amazing movies, such as Sleepaway Camp Part 4, Black Sunday, Human Desires, and such. And I haven't been around that long. I haven't built enough of a presence as the actor. So the actor is the one that gets focused on a little bit more. But I'm still number two in all of those results. Let's do a search like this, but now with the competition. Let's go look at Bing.com and see what kind of results we get there. Open another window or another web browser and let's go to Bing.com, B-I-N-G.com. Bing.com. Search for yourself the exact same way as you just search for yourself on Google. Bing.com, if you've never visited before or never heard of it, it's just another search engine. It's another website that helps you stop, have, helps you find stuff online. It's uh, visually different than Google. They have an interesting picture on the home page every day that changes. It has a little headline at the bottom, a section of headlines, but it's still about search. There's a search box right there. I'm going to search for myself the same way that I search for myself on Google. If it gives you suggestions, just ignore that. I'm going to search. This one gave me 4.5 million results, whereas Google gave me 28 million results. This one seems to promote the photos first, rather than Google. There's my photo again. It's mentioning the actor in a much more obvious result. Then the first result is the Internet Movie Database again. The next result is Facebook. That's not me. The third result is my LinkedIn. So I'm third on Bing, second on Google. The LinkedIn result in Bing is also a little bit different. It tells me right away, Director of Technology, Internet Business, 86 Connections. Both Bing and Google are looking at the same Internet, all the same websites of the world. But again, each one has its own algorithm that it claims is better, that shows you better results. Simply by looking at those, both of those, my uh, LinkedIn result on Google and my LinkedIn result on, on Bing, it's both the same link, the same website, but here Bing is kind of helping me a little bit more by showing me a little bit more relevant information right away in my case. It goes on to say the other LinkedIn profiles with Victor, the TV guy, the attorney in New York, white pages, Rotten Tomatoes, videos, and then suggestions. So on Bing, really, I'm only one. One of my sites is, is me on the Google, on the Bing search. Over on Google, five of them are me. Uh, just based on that, you might say, well, the Google result is better. But we don't want to think in terms of which is better. We want to think in terms of how many people can we reach. Uh, because some people use Google and some people use Bing. As I said, at, at a certain point, Google had a higher market share. Now it's decreased. Bing is increasing. So it behooves us to think about optimizing also for, for Bing. Did any of you find any result on Bing that was not on Google? Yes. A few people. Okay, good. Um, let's go back to Google and do another search where we search for the name of your business. If you've got a business, search for it. Don't do anything fancy. Just search for the name of your company. Spell it as it's supposed to be spelled. Don't think about any of any advanced tricks of searching just yet. Just put the name of your website on Google. And then we'll do it on Bing also. So on Google, I'm going to search for the name of my company. Number one result. Perfect SEO, right? That's a trick question. 
yes, I'm number one, page one on a Google search. That's exactly what the goal of SEO is. But it's a trick question because if someone knew the name of my company, of course I'm going to be number one. They're not going to really search for that. That'll be the third search we'll do in a moment. The purpose of this search is to show you this is what Google and Bing know about my company besides my website. On Google, number one is our website. And it has, in this case, last updated January 2016. Next result is our Facebook. Next result is our Yelp with our star ratings. Next result is the company LinkedIn. Next is the company Twitter, the, 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 one of our apps on Google Play, our YouTube channel, a video about one of our apps, alignable.com. That's a new one. I hadn't, I hadn't seen it. So some new website has appeared now, starting on the results page. And then Zoom Info. That's another one I haven't heard of. So two new results are starting to appear on Google. But all of these results are to show you this, in short, is SEM. What else are you doing besides your website? Because number one is the website. But Google knows much more. 269,000 more results comparing with Bing. Number one result again is our website. Notice it's listed a little bit different. Thank you, Bing, for showing our phone number easily. People can call us easier. Google's not doing that. Oh, Bing, thank you for also showing us on the map and directions and website. Google's not doing that, and it's doing this for free. Oh, what I also see Bing doing, it's giving these deep links. It's showing portfolio, about, blog, services, contact. Google isn't showing that, again, for free. Question. So our number one competitor comes up um, under people also search for, mm -hmm. and his name is nothing close to ours. Do they keep somehow link him down to our company? No, it's because the search engine algorithm is trying to show the best results. So what it's trying to do is, this is a company about X product or service. This is a bunch of other companies with that X product or service. So it's not that you know some sort of trick happened. It's just that the search engine is trying to give people options about, well, do you want to hire this company or that company or this company? So we have figured out what our company is about and then attached, brought up because this company is similar. Yes, exactly. Name, yes. Okay. Over on Bing, um, second pay, second result. I also get the I, I get a deep link here, and a deep link just means that it's a link that's not on the home page. It's a deeper page within our site. It's showing a, the portfolio page, second place. So it's saying, let's go look at uh, or go check out the uh, go check out the the portfolio of this company, maybe to decide to hire them. Next result is the Yelp again. Also notice it's shown a little bit different than on Google. Uh, on Google it looks like this, star rating and so forth, phone number. But over on, on the one for, for Bing, it's the same star ratings and phone number, but notice that's much more memorable and it stands out and looks nicer and there's a phone number. Same search, same website that it's searching, different presentation our Google+, Plus, our YouTube, with our subscribers, our Facebook, with the likes and the LinkedIn, and then the very last result is PMD Interactive Stock Chart, which is not us. We are not in the stock market. So this is someone else. This is the Psychomedics Corporation, PMD. So this is someone else. But I show you this result when you search for your name to see what do the search engines know about you or your company. Google claims that there are 269,000 relevant results. No one is going to look at the 12th or 30th one, the 200,000th one. They're going to look at the first page, usually. Bing says that there are 445,000 relevant results. Again, no one's going to be over on page 100, most likely. They're going to be on page 1, maybe page 2, maybe page 3. They're going to browse f further pages. And I'm showing you here because I'm showing you this because SEO 
what are you doing on your site to get found SEM what are you doing off your site to get found by searching your company name this is a quick way to check what do the search engines know about you besides your website because a few years ago you wanted a you wanted a website that was the big thing now that's the minimal thing nowadays it's bare minimum to have a website now you need to also think about getting on Facebook getting on Twitter getting on Yelp getting on Angie's List getting on any number of websites that I'll talk about in detail later but what else are you doing besides being on a website do you have a presence elsewhere is one of the two SEO versus SEO more important? nope they're both very very important nowadays uh, at one point SEO was more important but as the algorithms get smarter they're putting more weight on each so you really need to engage in both if you focus on one heavily it could work but if you work on both it's better for the long term you're attacking the issue from all angles because SEO could be you know ranking on the search engines could be tricky as we will see why so the more you do this the better we'll do one more search this is a more accurate one perhaps I search for my name I search for my company. I'm going to search for what my company does. I'm going to search for a keyword of what my company does or sells or is about. If you have some experience here, don't get too fancy. And what I mean is, we do web design. So I'm simply going to type web design. I'm not going to type web design San Diego. I'm not going to get too fancy with my search yet. I'll explain why a little later. But I'm just going to type a keyword about what my website is about, what my business is or does. Just very basic and ignore any of these suggestions. Just type a basic search in both engines. Google claims that there are 437 million relevant results from my search. Bing claims there are 1.1 billion relevant results for web design. And here now, you might find it more, much easier. This is that, what I was saying about paying for results. <laughs> a less savvy internet user that searches, they need someone to do a website for them. A less savvy person sees this page of results, sees number one, and thinks it's the best. It's the best. It's at the top. I'm going to click it and hire web.com. There's a some percentage of people that are like that, that are going to see the first result, click on it, because it's the first, it's the top, it's the best. But perhaps, why might it not be the best? It says ad. They're paying for it. So perhaps at the moment, just to think of random numbers, web.com might have paid $500 to be number one, and then yourdesignguys.com paid $450 and Wix.com paid $200 but the next week Wix might pay $700 and they'll be number one and web.com will be number two so paying for your placement has some value because some amount of people will see that result and click and the search engines will gladly take your money and place you on these results and such but uh, you'll have to keep investing in that. You'll have to keep paying uh, to keep getting views. And I'm not saying that's bad. That can be very valuable. Let's say you have a hundred dollars budget to to use that for a couple of weeks or months to get a little bit of uh, of traction. That one hundred dollars you spent to get visible to get visibility could result in a thousand dollar sale. And it paid for itself then. In this class, we're not really going to talk about paying for placement on the search engines. That's a whole deeper topic that, we, that I'm not going to cover. Uh, it's got its own complications. Um, that is often known as PPC, pay per click. So two tactics for SEO. 
PPC. Also, uh, that's pay per click. Also, more simply known as ads, which is paying for visibility. You say, well, that's that's outlandish. Why would I pay the search engine to, to show me more often? In the real world, people, play, people pay for this all the time. It's marketing in the real world. It's that billboard on the street. It's that radio ad. It's that person juggling that sign really well. All of that is real world PPC, is real world paying for visibility. So it's not, a, it's not an affront to your sensibilities. It's not, it's not a scam to pay the search engines to give you more visibility. It is a constant investment, sure. Like you have to pay week after week, month after month to have that billboard up there. But you're getting all the people driving on the 5 during rush hour, and maybe a 1,000 people see it, and 10 call you, and you make a sale, and it pays for itself. You're seeing 10,000 people seeing your ad, and then 40 hire you, and that pays for itself. Again, we're not going to really get into that in this class. What we're going to talk about is organic SEO. Yes. yes. Um, do you see people, I, I have this bias when I see the uh, search result as an ad, and I don't click on it because I know it's been paid for. Mm -hmm. Do you think a lot of consumers have that same bias? I think so also. I don't know the percentage. I don't know the percentage, but in, uh, in examples of... Uh, real-world examples from our real clients. We do get results from these clients that choose to engage in, in payments, in paying for ads and such. And you can pay for placement on Google and in Facebook and on Twitter. You can pay all of these networks now to get more visibility. It does work. It's going to also depend on your competition, if it's valuable or not to you. And yes, there's going to be some percentage of people, I don't know what the percentage is, that have ignored this for years and will never click an ad because they paid. But there's going to be some percentage of people that either don't know it's an ad or don't care it's an ad and want to get a result. Yes? It is. No, the ones that are marked as an ad in green. Mm -hmm. Further down, they're not. But all the ones that have been paid for our ads, yes. So we're doing this the organic method, the free method. This is the long way. The PPC is the shortcut. And I don't need I don't want to diminish that method at all. We do it also for clients. We do both ways. We do organic and we do PPC. It, both of them work. If we need to get the word out very quickly for a particular brand new product for a company. We do some PPC to get a bump, a quick bump. We follow it up with a lot of organic stuff to then keep it rolling and snowballing and such. For you, if you're on a budget or don't want to pay for that, you can still definitely get results via organic. It's just perhaps going to take longer. But I highly still recommend organic because it builds a good foundation. It's like building a house very quickly and cheaply, PPC, as opposed to building it very professionally and expensively with the best materials. It's going to be more expensive in the short term, but in the long term, a better house. So in the long term, organic could be much better for you. But don't be afraid to use both. Part of the reason why next week we are going to set up the webmaster tools is to check results organic and paid. We're going to check, okay, I've spent $100. Is it working? And there's several ways to check if it's working, and one is through the webmaster tools, which is basically to connect the web, the search engine to your website to see the results for free of either organic or PPC. So that's why next week, bring your password. Comparing with Bing, I search web design. I see ads on Bing also, but notice Bing isn't as obvious. They just changed this color. It used to be yellow like four days ago, a week ago. The search engines keep changing their algorithm, keep changing their pages, keep changing their techniques. Maybe green stands out more than yellow. I think yellow stands out more, but I noticed it because I see these things all the time. And Bing has been for a while now, not being very obvious that these are ads. Did anyone notice that's an ad? 
So are they being duplicitous and such? Maybe. But notice the number one result on Bing is Wix. Wix was number three. Maybe it cost them $500 on Google to be number three. And it cost them $200 to be number one on Bing. I'm just picking random numbers, but this is just, let's say it's a budget. It's a budget, and when the budget is spent, it's spent, which it may last a day, a week, or a month. I have a question. Yes. For PPC, are you paying by words? If somebody type in white design and you pay 500 bucks? There's a variety of ways to do it, but that's the most common. You pay for these keywords that people are searching for. And some keywords are more expensive. I want that web design keyword, but I'm going to have to fight 437 million other people. So that keyword might be worth more than another one that is uh, different or more specific. So Bing um, also sort of uh, then shows these deep links with, with Wix. Then after that, we got your web design guys. They're number two on Bing as well as Google. Number three is Upwork.com. They're not even on Google, but they've got a high placement on Bing. We got then AIonline.edu. Oh, teach yourself or get an education in graphic design. It's kind of off topic, but they're there. Then we've got full service web design from CIBOSF.com. So different results, different uh, examples of paying. Bing is then showing a bunch of graphics of web design, which I think this is not worth anything at all. Going down lower on Google, this is very useful. A map. It seems to have known I'm in San Diego, so hey, here's some San Diego web designers instead of some New York web designers or some uh, London designers. I want that. I want to appear like this on Google. Um, this sort of like uh, promotion or spotlight. Some people will look at it and be conditioned because of the ads to say, this is also an ad, I'll never click these. And go further here. Some people will see these, see the star ratings, and click. Bach Design is number one here. They're not number one at the top, paid ads, and I don't think they're lower here. But Bach Design is number one in this spotlight. I would like to be on this spotlight. And the secret here is that this is tied to a Google Plus profile, a Google Plus business account. Yes, um, you might see the Google Plus being featured on Google because guess what? They're both from the Google company. Google, even though they protest over and over and over that they don't tweak the results, you do see a lot that each search engine favors certain results. It's their algorithm. So it shouldn't be surprising if a Google result gets higher ranking on a Google search as, as opposed to a Bing search you might get a different result because they're competitors, different algorithm. The Google Business Spotlight, I believe it has an official name, but that's, that's what we'll call this thing here, this spotlight of businesses, this local spotlight of businesses. The Google Business Spotlight can be created with a Google Plus business page. Is Google Plus Business page different than Google My Business? No, it's the same thing. They kind of are a little schizophrenic on its name, but Google My Business, Google Plus, it's all, it's all related. So, Google My Business. A free Google Plus page for your business could be the way that you get more visibility here for free. In my social media class, we spend one day talking about that. In the social media class, if it's a four week long class, we spend one day per network. One day on all the do's and don'ts, tips and tricks on Twitter for business. One day on Facebook, one day on Google+, one day on Pinterest. That class is actually usually in two parts. Part two, then we talk about one full day of LinkedIn for business, Instagram for business, and YouTube for business. So if you have the time, whenever it's 
out there in the catalog, I would look for the social media class. I focus on using social media for business, more SEM. In short, if you want to stand out more on Google, get a Google Plus page. It's free. Use it and get free promotion like this. Uh, Bing is not showing it because Google Plus is a social network from Google and Bing, uh, Google search comes from the company Google which is now actually known as Alphabet. Do you guys know that? It's not called Google anymore, it's called Alphabet. If you didn't know, we just keep calling it Google anyway. But the Bing search engine, Google search comes from the Google company. Bing search, does anyone know what company makes that? Microsoft. Microsoft. So Google search comes from Google company, Bing search comes from Microsoft company. Competitors, Google wants to dominate, Microsoft wants to dominate, and so I'm not seeing uh, the nice, uh, I'm not seeing the big beautiful Google Plus results like I would see on Bing. I do find, you know, a plain Google Plus link but not a big fancy one like I would do on the other network. Notice also the search engines evolve. Remember when the search engines used to have numbers next to the results? They don't anymore. Um, I don't see numbers on Bing either. On Bing, I see two columns, the main line and the side line. I don't see the sideline on Google anymore. Remember there used to be a side of ads over here? No more. It looks weird and empty. But these search engines change their algorithms, their techniques all the time. <clears throat> they have to, <clears throat> because as we will see, the do's and the don'ts of SEO, we can get them directly from the search engines. And if we can learn those do's and don'ts, so can the spammers, so can the hackers, the crackers, the bad guys, the, all these all these bad websites they can learn the, the secrets to SEO too they can abuse those secrets as well and therefore the search engines have to change the secrets again and we have to learn it again and apply it and then eventually those techniques get abused we have to learn new techniques so this is an ever moving goalpost that has to happen because of so much spam so many spam websites so many fake websites So let's say I'm going to ignore the ad. I'm going to ignore anything that looks like an ad. What we are left with then are organic results. So if I jump down here, the first organic result is webdesign.org. That's what I want to click, right? Well, I'm getting a result about web design tutorials. I don't want that. I want to hire a web designer. So that's not a good result, even though it's number one, and they didn't pay for it. The next result is jacobtyler.com. That might be a good one. Question. So, um, so I'm seeing like, so the pay ads are right there, right? Mm -hmm. and sometimes like right below it, it's like the, they're like the same, mm. the same person. The same company? Yeah. Well, the problem with paying and such is that that can happen sometimes in that Wix paid for number one, but then they also showed up organically without paying for it. Sometimes that happens because the search engines will gladly take your money and put you up there. But remember, the goal of our class is to learn how to rank without paying for it. So they're engaging in it in both ways, paying for placement and also SEO and SEM to get found organically. So um, for them, it might be good for them to do double the work. But for us, I don't want to do double the work. I just want to get found. I don't want to pay for it and do it organically, perhaps. Um, so it, it happens. Um, either or will work, or both to various degrees, paying or not paying. So the first maybe real result over on Bing is jacobtyler.com top web design in San Diego branding agency, Jacob Tyler. Next result is an article on Wikipedia about the theory of web design. That's not worth anything. Then web.com offers do-it-yourself and web design hosting, etc. Just by seeing web.com official site, I get no indication of what this really is. Do I want to click? But based on their description here, 
perhaps that gives me an indication or a hint if I should click or not. This SERP, Search Engine Results page for Google or Bing, the SERP appears to then to then give me results where I have to make a decision to click or not. I see a Yelp results result for Yelp, for San Diego designers, web designers in San Diego. In this case, Yelp is number one, and the next one, there's Bop Design. They're number two. I'm not seeing Bop Design over on Bing, on page one. But they're the first real result on Google. Some news articles about web design. 50 web designers in San Diego. A Behance Portfolio, Toots Plus, DogAndRooster.com, San Diego web design, top web design, design firm in San Diego, etc. And then more ads. Web design for only $649. What I'm getting at here is the search that we did here, this is a very competitive space. There's a lot of web designers. So this is what I always have to say with, with SEO. This, this is not guaranteed, unfortunately. You learn everything here in these three weeks, it's still not guaranteed that you'll be number one. Maybe you'll, you'll go from being number 40 to number seven. That's still much better. Page one. Page one is gold. But maybe even with all your work in organic SEO, you never reach number one, but you're on the first page. That's still good. Maybe you're trying to reach page one, number one. That's like gold dipped in platinum. But that's really hard to do because of the competition. So many factors that we'll discuss. But what I will say is, SEO can be difficult to do successfully because of many factors. Like your competition, your keywords, your budget, your content, many things. We'll, we'll get detailed, of course. But this can be complicated. I'm saying this because our company does this. We do websites, and then we offer SEO for the website. And we tell the client early on, you're going to hire us, but we can't guarantee results within a timetable. We will do all of our tactics and all of our tips and tricks and all of our advice and such. And we will check in periodically, every month, every three months, whatever. We will see how we're doing. We're going to check our stats. We're going to see we're climbing or we're falling. And then we're going to switch techniques, or we're going to double down, or we're going to try something else. Because SEO can be difficult to implement. It'll be hard, perhaps, to get number one. You're yet another web designer, yet another realtor, yet another fencing company, yet another dog walking company yet another vegan organic fair trade specializing bakery. Yes, there's going to be yet another of what you're trying to do, unfortunately. If you have the idea, someone else could have the idea, and therefore you're going to have competition. So that's why I'm saying SEO can be complicated, perhaps not difficult, and it can't be guaranteed. If you ever, let's say you take this class, you learn all of these things, but you decide, well, it was a great education, but I can't do it. I need to run my business. I'm going to hire someone to do SEO. And you hire that person, and they're talking about all the wrong techniques, the old techniques, the outdated techniques that I'll mention. That's not a good company to hire. Let's say they're going to um, fill you with all of this jargon that you didn't learn in this class. Perhaps that's not a good company to hire. Perhaps they are talking about all the things we'll talk about, but they'll say, okay, hire us, and then in a month you'll be number one. That's not a good company to hire either. A company that gives you an exact deadline of when you'll be number one is not good. Because this could be very inexact. And what they could do is take the money that you're paying them and engage in PPC. And yeah, you're number one in a week. 
but then that contract ends, the money runs out, and you're not number one again. Oops, I've got to hire them again. I'm number one again. They must be amazing. They're paying for the for the placement, perhaps. So no company, SEO company, should be guaranteeing results in any timetable. Even a year. You don't know. You don't know your competition until you start this. We will have an assignment where we do competitor analysis. What am I up against? Who am I up against? And uh, it could be tricky. It could be difficult to rank higher than the competition for many factors, which we will discuss. I'm not trying to scare you, of course, but this is a very competitive business. Uh, I mean, um, space, you know, to get found online. This has got half a million results that are competing. Ha half a billion results that we're competing with. And that's even more listed over here on Bing. It is 1.1 billion results. We're going to take a break and then we're going to do a different kind of search in just a moment. Um, I'm going to turn on the printer if you want to print the syllabus and such. But we're going to take a, our first break and then we'll, we'll go on. But any general questions at this point so far? It's about 7.30. We'll take a 10-minute break until 7.40. And then we'll talk some more.